Hi, welcome back for more Explore Tulsa. Our next guest is a third generation piano man whose grandfather started the tradition back in the mid 1800s at a shop in Germany. Today, Bill Miller has some amazing stories and treasures to share with us. When I was a young boy, wasn't this kind of music, it was this kind. This was the money back in those days. When I was growing up as a young boy, my dad didn't allow this kind of music in there. So we had to be, I, when he would come in the driveway, I would be playing Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven. Then when he would leave in the morning times and go anywhere where I could, I'd start playing. If he'd ever heard that kind of music, he would have kicked my buns, I'm telling you, gentlemen. <laughs> We started in 1870 in Dresden, Germany. My grandfather worked for Steinweg in, in Germany. Well, in 1890, they wanted a master craftsman in America. So they called him up and asked him if he would move his family to Germantown in Brooklyn, New York in 1890. So he got to move to Brooklyn, New York and work for Steinway at that time. So when he was working there at Steinway, Jenkins Music Company was a very large corporation that was wanting to be magna. They wanted to be the biggest in the world. So they asked my grandfather if he would move to Kansas City, Missouri, because they were gonna open up a store called the Crown Plaza. So my grandfather and his family moved to Kansas City, Missouri. In that time, my dad was growing up as a young man and they wanted to know if he would come to Tulsi town because of all the oil and everything. So my father decided, well, he was single and his brother and him was working for Jenkins Music Company in Kansas City, so they asked him to come down and he said, well, I'll just go down there. So he moved down to Tulsi town. My father would bring the action in to be worked on. He would put it on the bench and my job was to tighten the screws in it when I was first up. I did that till I was five years old. Then after that, he would bring the action in and I could take it apart. It got to that. By the time I was nine years old, I was tuning pianos, standing up on the piano bench, tuning pianos, upright pianos. So the Ford Motor Company came in to Springdale School over on Pine and said they wanted somebody that was kind of unique and everything like that. So everybody kind of pointed to me and says, this guy here does something different. So they blindfolded me, turned me around three times and told me to take this piano apart, put it back together and play a song on it. So I did all that and I played the T for two on that piano. And I won a four year scholarship. So I take this scholarship home to my father and everything like that. My dad says, son, I hate to tell you this. You're the firstborn of the German family. You'll be doing piano work. But I said, dad, I don't want to do piano work. Well, let me say this to you. After a few little intriguing things that happened, I got where I enjoyed being a piano man. <laughs> My grandfather died at 92, my dad died at 97, so before he died, he told me, I want you to carry the business on until you get 100. So I'm underneath the gun now, trying to make this thing work till 100 years old. I don't know if I'm gonna make it or not, but I'm just telling you, with all the new pianos today, it's, it's kind of hard out there because there's no interchange with a piano. See, back then, you could take one piano, you could almost interchange it. Today, you can't do that. And then back then, they saved every drop of wood they could. Today, you know, if you have extra pieces laying around, well, they throw it in the floor and there's a guy that'll come by and sweep it up. It wasn't that way back in the old days. It's the challenge. 
Everything that comes in, I have done tornado pianos that was completely ruined, and I can show you pictures where it, I mean, completely gone, tops, everything gone off of, and we rebuild them and they play. Because every, today's world, we have so many people says, I can't get my piano fixed. Nobody knows how to work on it. I said, I'll fix it. So they'll bring it to me. And they, when they come in here, I'm just telling you guys, they do not play when they come in this shop. They go out playing.